Hello. In this practical work, you'll determine the concentration of solutions by electrical conductance measurements. First, let's introduce some useful theoretical notions. An electric current is created by the orderly movement of charged particles, such as electrons or ions, under the action of an electric field. However, in most mediums, this movement is hindered by obstacles. The physical quantity that characterizes the property of mediums to oppose the current flow is called electrical resistance. It is measured in the international system of units in ohms. Its reciprocal quantity, the electrical conductance, characterizes the ease of electrical charge's movement through a medium. The electrical conductance of a medium depends on its composition and on temperature, and its values are measured in the international system of units in Siemens. Since electrolytes dissociate in ions when dissolved in polar solvents, their presence and concentration alter the electrical conductance of the solution they form. In medical laboratory, electrical conductance measurements are used to determine the concentration of electrolytes in biological fluids or to check the purity of solvents. Electrical impedance tomography is a non-invasive type of medical imaging that relies also on the analysis of electric conductance of biological tissues. In this practical work, you'll analyze electrolyte solutions by conductometry. First, you will measure the electrical conductance of some potassium chloride solutions of various concentrations. In the second part of this work, you will study the temperature effect on the electrical conductance of electrolyte solutions. For this experiment, you will use a conductometer equipped with a measuring electrode, a magnetic stirrer with heating function, a digital thermometer, two Berzelius glasses, a crystallizer, a magnet, tweezers, solutions of potassium chloride of different concentrations, distilled water, and tap water. First, connect the conductometer and the magnetic stirrer to the power outlet. Before starting the experiment, use the following steps to calibrate the conductometer. Set the 1000 millisiemens measuring range. With the measuring electrode in air, push and keep pressed the calibration button on the back panel. Rotate the calibration knob until the indicator overlaps with the red triangle mark on the display. Release the button on the back panel. The indication needle should return to the zero position. Attention! Before any measurement, at the start and at the end of the experiment, rinse well the electrode, Berzelius glass, the magnet and tweezers with distilled water. Wash the electrode by dipping it into distilled water. First, measure the electrical conductance of distilled water. Dip the electrode in the study solution. Use the following procedure to read the conductance value. Find the appropriate measuring domain by rotating the range button counterclockwise. Continue rotating until the indicator exceeds the maximum value of the scale shown on display. Then, turn the range button back one position. In this way, you find the range domain to read the conductance value of the solution with maximum precision. If the measuring range starts with digit 1, you will read the conductance on the upper scale, whose maximum value will be 1, 10, 100 or 1000. If the measuring range starts with a digit 3, you will read the conductance on the lower scale, the maximum value being either 3, 30 or 300. For example, in this case, since the measuring range is 100 millisiemens, the value of electrical conductance is 35 millisiemens. Instead, if the measuring range would be 30 microsiemens, at the same position of the indicator, we would read the conductance value of 11.5 microsiemens. Read the electrical conductance of distilled water three times and record the values in the table, expressing them in millisiemens. Repeat the steps and measure the conductance of tap water, the five solutions of potassium chloride of known concentration, 
and for one solution of potassium chloride of unknown concentration. Attention! After each measurement, don't cast the potassium chloride solutions. Pour them back in their containers. Calculate the mean values of the electrical conductance for each solution and their corresponding standard errors. Plot the conductance as a function of potassium chloride concentration. After drawing the calibration curve, by linear interpolation, determine the unknown concentration of the last potassium chloride solution. In the second part of this experiment, you will study the temperature effect on the electrical conductance of electrolyte solutions. For this, you will use a potassium chloride solution of known concentration. Pour the solution in the measuring Berzelius glass and place it in the crystallizer. Add tap water in the crystallizer to avoid the fast and uneven heating of the study solution. Place the crystallizer on the magnetic stirrer hot plate. Deep inside the study solution, both the measuring electrode and the temperature sensor. Turn on the magnetic steering. To start the heating, rotate the temperature control knob up to approximately 50 degrees Celsius mark. Read the solution temperature on the digital display of the thermometer. For each integral value of temperature, read the conductance value and record it in the table. After reaching 37 degrees Celsius, stop the heating and the magnetic steering. Pour back the study solution in its container and rinse the instruments with distilled water. Finally, represent graphically the variation of conductance with temperature and analyze the results.